This is a surgical forcep. It's also known as the Adson forceps, and it's found in almost every single surgical procedure done in hospitals today. So today I wanted to talk about where it comes from, why it's named the way it is, uh, when you would use it, when you wouldn't use it, and how you would go about doing so. If you're like me, you've either been pimped on this tool uh, while you're in the hospital or you're just curious as to where instruments come from. No one really teaches medical students like myself these instruments and their indications and their use cases until we're already in a situation like that. And while I know it now, it's something that I wish I had known earlier, which is why I'm making this video and why I think it's important for you to watch. A brief history on the Adson forcep. It's, it's named after Alfred Adson, a prominent American neurosurgeon in the 1900s, describing various approaches to glossopharyngeal neurologist surgeries, and especially spinal cases and spinal tumors. And so his role in American neurosurgery is pretty cemented, but he also contributed a lot to surgical instrumentation. And of these is the Adson surgical forcep, which I'm holding in my hand. Okay, so this is a basic uh, toothed forceps. Uh, when I say toothed, I, I'm talking about these grooves here. They kind of function like teeth as you pinch together. You, you hold it between your thumb and your index finger kind of like a pencil. You don't want to hold it with the overhand grip as I'm showing, as that limits your mobility and your axis of motion, which is in incredibly important when manipulating tissues and skin. And you can really use it when you're practicing suturing at home like I am with this basic suture kit that I made. It costs about $10 to make, it's really easy, and I know you guys have been asking for a tutorial on how I made it, so that's coming up. Definitely get subscribed and like this video if you want that. But in any case, the Adson Tooth Surgical Forcep is used in this manner. I think it's important to show how you want to use a tool like this, so you're not bumbling around in the operating room doing your cases. But also because it's harder to overwrite bad habits than to just start out with good ones. So hopefully you can understand how I'm using it, how I'm using to pry the rubber bands apart, and how you can imagine using it to pry skin apart. I think it's really important to cover when you want to use a tooth forcep and when you want to use a non-tooth forcep. And the primary difference is that a tooth forcep is something that you use on tougher tissues. So think skin. That's primarily when you'll be using an Adson tooth forcep, uh, closing skin incisions. As a third year medical student, that's pretty much all I did. <laughs> So it was helpful for me to get familiar with an instrument like this. The non-tooth version is more helpful for neural tissue, vessels, and bowel, things that are more susceptible to puncture by trauma. And so it's really helpful and really critical for the patient that the person holding these tools understand when you don't and when you do want to use these tools. So far, my favorite part about researching these tools is learning how surgeons that are existing today are trying to modify these already existing, kind of maybe outdated tools. I found this particularly interesting report. I've linked it here. Uh, of a case that was in facial plastics about using a grooved version of this forcep to better stabilize nasal cartilage during rhinoplasty so that you can better throw your sutures. And yeah, while this case is very specific to this uh, use case, I thought it was really fascinating that surgeons were still working to improve surgical technology today. I thought it was, it was cool to share. And cool. But that's pretty much it. I've covered the main history of the Adson forcep. I've covered when and when not to use a forcep like this with tooth variants and non-tooth variants. I've covered how to hold, and hopefully I showed you how I would use it myself. I do wanna disclaim this video by saying that I am limited in my experience. I'm not a physician yet, I'm not a surgeon. I am a medical student, um, but I do co make content for you all, and so it was helpful for me to learn, but also to share what I learned uh, for everybody. But I just wanted to let you know that my experience limits my ability to talk really about the inner workings about forceps like this, how they're engineered, and when ultimately you can make decisions that will impact patients' lives. If you enjoyed this video at all, please consider liking and subscribing. It really helps me out and lets me know that I'm doing a good job in providing valuable and useful content for you. I know time is a luxury for medical students and pre-med students, so I keep these videos short and to the point and ultimately informational. Other than that, I'll see you guys in the next video and as always, stay curious.